Well, hey guys, it's Mike from the Geek Pub, and welcome to another episode of Pub Talk. Um, today, I am drinking Shock Top. Now, I actually prefer the uh, Lemon Shandy version of this, but you can't get it this time of year, um, so I deal with what I've got. Mm. But it's still quite tasty. So, interestingly enough, this is coming directly after the video I made about hand tools or power tools versus CNC. And I got a lot of comments from that video. And um, I think the overall consensus might have been that I am now anti-CNC or anti-X-Carve. And um, that's not true at all. I, um, I really enjoy using the X-Carve and I really enjoy doing CNC projects. Um, there's a time and a place to use every tool. Now, I will say that the X-Carve is a hobbyist version of a CNC machine. And so it's not something that, um, that you want to push probably as hard as I did. These DeWalt routers, for example, are not designed to run for hours on end continuously. They're designed to route this, stop, route that, stop, and so on. And so I ran that router for really honestly probably about close to eight hours without turning it off because I was doing some tests and stuff before I started. And so anyway, um, if anyone wants to send me a real CNC machine, like I got in the comments several times, um, then feel free. I'm looking at you, uh, Grizzly or uh, ShopBot. So, <laughs> so I did get a few comments that I wanted to answer directly. And um, I think the thing that I want to make really clear is that I was actually hoping that the X-Carve would have finished because what I really wanted to do in that video was compare the finish quality of what I could do by hand versus what the machine could do. And honestly, from that perspective, I really thought the machine would win. Um, I thought my gripes were going to be that, well, it took you know seven or eight hours to make the product um, and you know it was gonna be kind of a, is it really worth it kind of analysis. But that's not what happened, it was completely unexpected. Um, but some comments I got, is, one was, uh, why didn't you just use the CNC to make the template? I got that one a bunch of times, both on my blog, on, on uh, YouTube, and on um, Instagram. And if you're not following me in those places, you should, because I post pictures all day long on Instagram when I'm working on a project, so you get to see what I'm working on ahead of time. Um, it's Instagram.com slash The Geek Pub. Um, the reason I didn't use the CNC to make the template for the router version is really simple because I knew I would get a bunch of comments in the video that said, well, you know, uh, see, you did still need the CNC machine. You made, you made the template with it. And so I made the template on the um, scroll saw um, on purpose just so that I could avoid that comment and show that I did everything without the use of a robotic machine. Um, the second question that came up most often was what speed and feed rates were you using, which bit, um, and, it's, and this was a couple of times, it shouldn't have taken so long. Um, I used the default settings that come right out of easel based upon my machine type, my spindle type, and all of that. And um, I went in and I doubled those, and I did a few tests, and the machine was really struggling. I knew for a fact there was no way it was going to finish. It was going to slip the belt multiple times. And so I actually lowered the, the, the feed rate back down, but I kept my depth setting double the, um, the, the recommended. And I still had a slip towards the very end. Um, so um, the bit that I was using was a um, Kodiak two flute spiral cutter. Um, it's a fairly expensive bit compared to the ones that the Inventables website sells. It actually cuts like a dream. It's way, way better than the stock stuff. So if you need a good bit, grab one of those. It also will cut aluminum and much, much better than some of the, uh, the, the kit bits. Um, the other comment I got that was interesting is your comparison is not fair. You used a half inch router bit on your hand router. Well, unfortunately, that's all I have. So let's say that I used a half inch bit. Um, if I'd have used a quarter inch bit, it would have taken me maybe 20 minutes longer, let's say. Let's, I'll give you that. It's still no comparison. It's really not valid as far as the, um, as the timing's concerned. Um, what is the status of the DeWalt? Um, well, I turned it on this morning and I used it a little bit. It still seems to work fine. The X-Carve itself still seems to work fine. I just carved my initials into some stuff. No problem. So I guess it recovered. Well, time will tell if the, uh, the bearings are going to fail or something like that. Um, but, but no other signs of damage. There is a lot of blue marks around the, um, the collet where, um, where I guess the bit was spinning when it came loose. But it seems to be fine other than that. 
Um, I do have one idea, and it was mentioned in the comments as well. I actually bought an Arctic Blue Spider, I think it's called, laser. Um, you can burn wood with this thing, and I am going to take that, and I'm going to strap it to the X-Carb, I'm going to remove the bit, and I'm going to see if I can burn some wood, um, like, you know, do wood burning initials or designs or something like that um, using that blue laser. And I have a way to wire it in where I can turn it on and off, and so if I... I think if I do the automatic spindle control, I could make that be the on-off for the laser. I don't know. That's what we're going to find out. We'll see. Coming up, I hope. <laughs> Unless my tests are extremely bad. <laughs> then I'll just keep it to myself. Well, another video that happened recently that has been a topic of much debate is the uh, automated dust collection system that I put in the Geek Pub shop. And it has been quite the dream to have in my shop. And I actually use my dust collector all the time. You might have noticed that when I was cutting on the bandsaw in the previous video that I just hit the button and you could hear the dust collector turn on in the background. Um, the comment that I got more often than not on that video though was that the blast gates at $125 a pop are just too expensive for anyone to have in a hobbyist woodworking shop. And I kind of disagree with that, and I'll tell you why. I do, I do get the sentiment, and I do understand what you're getting at when you say that, and yes, I mean, it is very expensive um, if you're thinking about buying the kit as a whole. But if you're going to go out and you're going to spend $3,000, or some people I've seen spend five dollars or $6,000 on a table saw, what's $125 for an automated blast gate to go with it? So while, while I agree that I understand your, your idea and what, what you're getting at, it, it, I just think it's, it's not that big of a deal when you look at the overall, what you're already spending on all of your tools. Um, the other question that I got most commonly was, can I buy the system without the blast gates and it's still useful? Absolutely yes. As a matter of fact, I only put blast gates on four of my tools. I put a blast gate on the table saw, one on the bandsaw, one on the planer, and then one that's just kind of for all of the tools that are on the workbench that you see over here. And um, with that, I also got a remote control, and actually I have two remote controls, and you can put manual switches anywhere you want. Um, with that, you can just carry the remote control around on your side, and you can turn on and off the dust collector remotely. And so if you had manual blast gates, and I do have a couple of manual blast gates in the, in the shop, I have one that is connected to my floor sweep. And so all you have to do is walk over, manually open the blast gate, and then hit the button on your remote, and you're in business. And so that's one way you could save some money because the blast gates are by far the most expensive part. The switch that you see here is, I want to say it was like um, 150 bucks. Don't quote me on that. Um, uh, and then the, the tools I think are like $45 a piece. Um, uh, don't quote me on that. I'll put comments in the description that have the actual prices. But yeah, so you could make a much cheaper solution without the blast gates. Oh man, that's good stuff, good stuff. So, many of you have been asking me, where in the world is the R2-D2? Well, I haven't made it yet. I'm still planning it out, I've got a lot of ideas. Um, I'm really disappointed that I announced it because I'm not kidding, after I announced it, multiple other channels started making one. And it seems like every time I announce that I'm going to make something, somebody else beats me to it. And so when I make mine, it has to be unique and different in some way. Um, and I've got several ideas. Unfortunately, those ideas are very complicated and they can't not be done in the next two or three weeks. Um, I was really hoping to have it out to coincide with the launch of the Star Wars movie um, in, in late December, but that's not going to happen. So it's still in the works. I'm still thinking about it, still has some ideas. Got to keep them all secret. I still, I still hear constantly that the arcade is one of the best projects that I have done. Um, thank you guys so much. I really appreciate that. Thanks to everyone who has bought my plans. Um, that is really, really um, helpful to me. Um, I can't wait to see what Bob Claggett over at I Like to Make Stuff does. He's working on an arcade right now. And, um, you know, I love seeing um, other channels build things that I've built because they always do things different and gives me ideas for what I could do the next time I want to make one because I still want to make a cocktail table. And that is on my list. In fact, that's what I wanted to make first. So if I get the chance, I will be making a cocktail table arcade cabinet, maybe next year. Um, it has been a really big hit though. Every time that the kids go upstairs, they gotta play a game. Every time I have guests walk over, or every time I have guests come over, they walk into the, uh, the game room, they see it, and they go, oh, I gotta play a game. And it's a great conversation piece because when I tell people that I made it myself, they can't believe it. 
Well, I get asked all the time if I'm going to do any more PVC projects, and if you followed my channel from the beginning, you know that I did a lot of PVC projects in the very beginning. Um, I did a CO2 cartridge launcher, a balloon launcher, and a whole bunch of stuff like that. And um, PVC projects are really fun and they're really easy. Um, YouTube, though, is just saturated with those projects, and so it's really hard for me to come up with something unique and different. Um, and so I just haven't come up with anything lately that I want to make. Um, so probably I will do some more PVC projects, but I don't have any on the immediate roadmap. Okay guys, well I just want to end on a couple of notes. Number one is I've been accused of censorship for deleting comments. And um, I want to be real clear, I do delete comments for my channel and I do it fairly often. But I only delete a certain kind of comments. I delete comments that are vulgar or in some ways so incredibly rude that I just don't feel like they deserve to exist on my channel. But there's an ulterior motive for that, and that is I get emails all the time from school shop teachers that say, hey, I just showed your video in my class, and they loved it. We're going to make that project. And um, I've had several students email me directly and say they won first place because they made my project for their either their science fair project or their school shop project or something like that. And that means the world to me. And so I want to make sure that my channel is a safe place for those kids to come. And so I don't want anything on my channel that would kind of tarnish that in any way. And so those are the only kinds of comments that I will delete. You can call me dumb and stupid and whatever you want as long as you do it in a respectful manner and you don't use a bunch of vulgarity. Um, I won't delete any comments like that. The last thing I want to talk about before I let you guys go is originality. So I get asked a lot or told a lot, um, in fact, Basically, every video that I have ever made, I get a comment on it that said, such and such already made that, or you just copied such and such. And um, that really irritates me. It irritates me for a couple of reasons, because number one, most of the time, if you look at the date on my video and the date on the video that they're accusing me of copying, mine was first, sometimes a year or two first. And so just because they knew that channel, I guess they thought they were first. I don't know. That whole thing is just weird to me. But um, that one really annoys me. But the other thing is, there are some times when I make a video that someone else has already made. And um, I do that because I feel like I am doing it in some way different, or I hate to use the word better because that, that sounds a little arrogant, but um, there's a lot of really bad videos on YouTube and it's a great idea and I feel like I can do it justice, so I will remake it and make it better. Um, and I haven't done that very many times. I've done that, um, I don't know, probably four or five times if you go look through the um, video history. Um, of my, I don't know, 40 videos that I've made or something like that. Um, but again, I want to say that it's, it's interesting to me because it's like, let's say that such and such made the video first and then I made another version of it. What's really wrong with that? Um, do they somehow have a patent on that specific video or video idea? I mean, can you imagine the world if, you know, Star Wars came out and now no one else can make a sci-fi spaceship movie because Star Wars already did it? Um, I, don't, I don't buy into that at all. And In fact, when people make copies of my video, and trust me, there's a bunch of them out there. Go look. Just, just Google some of the titles of some of my videos and you will see direct duplicates that someone else made, almost sometimes to the word, like they copied my script or something. Hey man, flattery is the best form. I mean, I'm sorry, imitation is the best form of flattery. So it doesn't bother me at all. Um, go for it. Make, all, make copies of all my videos if you want. I don't even care if you give me credit. Um, it's fun. In fact, if I inspired you to go get in the shop and make something, I, I couldn't be happier. So that whole stuff that I, doesn't even bother me and the comments don't bother me. I just let them go. But I get so many of them, on, on a, especially on a couple of videos. And I don't know why, because those two videos, I was the original. But it doesn't matter. Hey, and on another note, guys, I just wanted to say that I passed 15,000 subscribers this week. Um, that is a milestone that I'm very proud of. This is a hobby channel for me. I have a real job. Um, in fact, it's the busiest time of the year, which is why I haven't put out many videos um, lately. Um, but for something that, to, like this, to, that's just a hobby for me to have that many people that are interested in it, man, I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate that. And I thank all of you that, that have followed me um, or subscribed to my channel over the years. So um, with that, thank you so much. You guys rule. See you in the next video.